Hey guys, so a lot of questions are centered around uh, how to get started with multiplayer uh, games. And uh, there's a lot of complexity there on finding like a host, or do you want to just host it from your house, or <laughs> what do you actually want to do? But uh, if you want to do something a little more professional, there's a lot of options out there, and many of them are for free. So let's take a look at what I found. So uh, for cloud companies, you probably know uh, there's about four big players, and I kind of use that loosely. It's probably about three really big players, but um, there's a few other small players that specialize in building websites and stuff like that. They're you know small business kind of stuff, but those are complete build-out solutions. Not really what I'm looking for here. What we're looking for here is a general host that you can develop your own stuff on, whatever you want, and it's pretty open. So as you can see here, uh, I have AWS, Oracle, which is kind of a smaller player. Google and Azure. Um, they all offer like a 12 month uh, free trial to try out a lot of stuff out and you can pretty much have a, a pretty wide range of things you can try there. Um, and once that expires there's always free options on every single one of these but only a few of them offer you free always available hosts which is what we want uh, for our game hosts so we don't have to you know run from our house or do something strange. Uh, and this is a great option for indies. Um, is zero cost so you can get started out right away and if you grow you can pay for more hosts or whatever you want to do uh, so background research here I, I tested out three of the big four players um, I didn't really use Azure I just didn't find a need to try that one out at the moment uh, maybe in the future uh, I built an end-to-end -end continuous integration for deployment so if you're not familiar with that what that means is uh, when you make a change uh, I had it on any branch, it'll do this, but you probably want to have it on re like release. Uh, it'll actually uh, take that and build it, if that is something you need to do. In my case, I didn't install GDScript. Um, and it will uh, actually deploy it and test it um, to your cloud environment. So typically, like in a CI environment, you have something that actually builds your entire uh, project, runs all your tests, and then um, we'll actually uh, deploy directly to the, the cloud. Um, for just the sake of simplicity, I didn't have uh, any testing on it, just have it deploy. And, um, but anyway, I can show that in a future video. Um, I evaluated all the always free options uh, and see which ones are best for the indie, and we'll talk about that later. Um, I mainly focused on just the free hosting that we're talking about, though. Um, there's a lot of options that are pretty good. They're pretty comparable between all of them uh, for free uh, database options in the cloud, uh, queues, notifications, lambdas, things like that. Um, and I'm not going to get really into that in this discussion. Uh, so here are the choices, and here's what I uh, pretty much found out as a high-level uh, bullet points. So AWS has a free tier um, that's always free. Um, so there's a lot of lambda database SQS, which is a type of queue. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, though, the free EC2 hosts expire after 12 months. So that won't work for us. As in these, we you know probably want to have some that's free always. Uh, Azure, um, same thing. Free tier, 12 months. Same stuff as AWS, basically. No free hosts that are always free. GCP, OK, we're getting a little better. Uh, similar options before for the free trial. But you get one free micro host uh, that's always free. And I'm not sure all the terms and conditions for that, but I think that you might be able to have multiple accounts. Like, say you have a use case for QA and for develop for your hosts. And uh, what I mean by that is typically you'll have, like, an environment set up uh, where you want to test something that's, you know, not ready for production. Uh, yeah, usually you have set multiple stacks for that. You'll have a test stack that uh, other, you know, the, the public can't see, but you can, like your development team, and you'll test in that stack before going to the production stack. So that's what that means. Um, so I think you might be able to have a few of those, but I do, I'm not a lawyer or anything, so look into that yourself. Um, Oracle Cloud, which I didn't even know had any good offerings. Um, actually, it has a really good offering. It has two always free micros. And uh, you'll see here how these stack up. So GCP hosts, what they have for a micro. So I'm gonna go back here. Uh, micro doesn't mean the same thing in both these cases here. So they'll be slightly different ones larger than the other. I'll show you in a minute here. 
So uh, the micro hosts on Google GCP, you get 600 megabytes of RAM, 30 gigabyte hard drive, five gigabyte snapshot. I think that's like a backup uh, system they have or something. Uh, one gigabyte egress traffic. So you're limited to a gigabyte out of this host every month uh, without paying extra. So that's one drawback. Uh, you just get one instance is another drawback. Uh, not like the two that Oracle offers. And of course the limiting uh, uh, traffic. Um, advantages though, uh, if you wanted to actually piggyback off of some of the cloud services, it's really well known and uh, pretty well uh, vetted and used in the industry. And they have Firebase, those are cool options, and uh, database. It's much more uh, mainstream and widely used. And so Stack Overflow and all that has plenty of data on it. So Oracle Cloud, uh, always free hosting. You get two micro instances per month, one gigabyte of RAM each, which is almost twice what Google offers. 100 gigabytes of block storage. What this is, is uh, you get this uh, storage allocation of 100 gigabytes. You can divide it up as much, however you want. They have a number of different st uh, services for that you could use. I th I'm not sure all that. I think one of them is like container hosting for your, your Docker uh, images that you can push out. Um, and, and so what I use it for is I just divide it in half and used uh, 50 gigabytes per uh, micro instance. So you, you can divide it however you want, though, whatever your needs are. Um, egress limit, I couldn't find one on this, so that means outgoing traffic. Uh, so I, I'm sure that there's probably some limit, but I didn't see what that was, so that might be an advantage. Uh, disadvantages, though, uh, they kind of push the old uh, database SQL designs on you. So if you were wanted to use NoSQL, they have something like that, but I don't, I don't think it's very uh, widely used, and so it might be a little bit of uh, uh, issue finding good documentation on that type of thing. Advantages, like I said, the two hosts, and it's twice, almost twice as much resources as uh, GCP. Uh, Oracle is modernizing, so they have some decent options now, and for cloud, and you'll kind of see that um, they're trying to push stuff out that's comparable to AWS. And uh, you can call other branded cloud services from here too. So if you have something better and you know AWS or something, you can call from here. But as I said there, watch out for latency because obviously it's not in the same stack and the same uh, data warehouse. So if you're gonna do that, just yeah, keep that in consideration. You might wanna do it for stuff that's like asynchronous. If it's something that has to go back to the user right away, that would be fine. You could push it off um, asynchronously and be none the wiser. It wouldn't really matter about latency then. So another thing I really liked about uh, Oracle is um, if you were to try to like add another host or whatever, and that's uh, beyond your two that are always free, it will warn you and you, it, you you won't be able to do it without actually upgrading and like actually okaying the fact they're going to charge you. With AWS, that's not the case. If you forget, go past your, your limits on the free tier. Um, they'll probably, I think they send you an email or something, but they'll actually charge you and it's pretty annoying. So Oracle seems more customer uh, friendly in that respect. And I believe GCP does the same thing, uh, but you want to double check on that. But uh, So that's really nice. So if you were to use a more mainstream like AWS service, you might run into those kind of problems. Or billing is kind of an issue. And uh, so that's all I have right here. Let's kind of look at what we, uh, the actual interfaces. All right, so here's what it looks like for the interface for Oracle when you're just in the free tier. So now the all the free trial stuff has expired, so you don't get all the extra goodies. But I have all the compute instances, which is two, and there's boot volumes, there's backups, which I think probably eats into your usual space. Uh, and there's autonomous data warehouse, which is pretty much just, a, I believe, just an Oracle instance that, uh, that self upgrade which is pretty nice. I haven't actually used it yet, but uh, one thing to watch out when you're using this uh, is it'll actually reclaim it if you're not actually making regular calls to the, to the uh, database. So uh, there's probably a way around that. I mean, obviously if you have your service up talking all the time, it'll, it'll stay around. But anyway, yeah, it's pretty easy to use. And if you were to want to actually add another instance here, uh, so let's say you wanted to add one, create an instance. Um, you wouldn't be able to, it would force you to upgrade. So you can't really make a fat finger mistake. It'll actually tell you at some point, like I think I could just try it and let's see here. There was some kind of bug where it was not loading the uh, the shape 
So, but now you can see what happens if I try to create, uh, you'll get an error message. Let's just see here. You reach a limit. So it'll force you to upgrade. So that's really nice. It won't uh, auto charge you and be annoying. All right, this is the Google interface here and um, the compute engine is where you want to go to find your host. And like I said, you can get one free host uh, per, I guess, per Gmail address, but you still have to put in your uh, your credit card information, I believe. Um, so here, I think if I were to try to create an instance, it would probably complain also. I'm a little bit scared to do it though. Let's see. Oh crap, well, I created it. I think that I have to like turn it off otherwise, and really quickly, otherwise it'll actually, I'll actually get charged. So it <laughs> doesn't appear to have the same safeguards that uh, that the Oracle has. I'll go ahead and turn it off. Well, hopefully I don't get charged for that. <laughs> but um, anyway, it'd probably only be like a, you know a few cents or a dollar. So that's kind of nice that Oracle does that. It kind of like keeps you from making a the mistake. There's probably a way to do that um, with automation here because there's all these you can you can actually configure limits and things like that um, within GCP. So there, and alarms and stuff like that. Um, so you might be able to do it that way too. By the way, uh, almost all the cloud platforms have alarming uh, for billing. So I think you can set it up on Oracle and obviously AWS has it. So yeah, anyway, that's just the basics there. Hope you enjoyed the talk. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, bye.